Joining me now is the CEO of Occupational Health and Safety Managers, Ehid. Ehi, good morning. It's good to have you join me right now. Now, the point there is the social media was agog yesterday with a lot of pictures from people in the, at the banks, people at the bus stops, people in traffic and all. Talk to me basically. I wonder what you saw yesterday. Were you surprised to see the number of crowd or the kind of crowd that you saw that everyone witnessed yesterday? Good morning, Mike. I was not surprised. I was looking forward to see such a crowd because uh, everybody had been kept at home for an average, <coughs> excuse me, an average of one month, and they were itchy to go out. To go out. And as government realized the lockdown, they all flocked out, and um, that was what was expected. I think, it, um, <coughs> excuse me, in my opinion, that's not the best decision so far because the coronavirus speed is still spiking. Um, you saw people like that yesterday everywhere, no social distancing. The, the infection rate, we have just given it a strong energy to go higher. And that's what I can say uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. All right. So you, so you think uh, uh, easing the, the, or partially easing the restriction is, is, a, is not a good idea for this time, is it? It's not a good idea. I, I know when we stay at home, it, everybody's going to suffer and because of, there's no, there are no funds, people can't go to work. But we have to suffer for that to stay alive. Easing, easing this lockdown, to me, is not a great idea at all. You don't ease lockdown when the pandemic is spiking. You are seeing the spike by the day, and you ease the lockdown. You just, you have just give all that we are, all that we achieve for the four weeks we stay at home. This lockdown ha we, we make us we make us lose all that we, we thought we achieved. I think it wasn't the idea in the in the in the right direction. All right, even before yesterday, that uh, was the official uh, beginning of the ease of uh, the lockdown. Uh, the previous week hasn't been tight when it comes to people obeying the restrictions and all of that. What do you make of the capacity and the ability of government to instill the compliance and uh, the instructions that they give out to, to citizens? Well, people, not, not, people at, that, at that third week or so, people not, not compliant. Complying fully was expected because one, most of them had stayed at home for too long. They wanted to go out. But the, 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 the truth is that government gave directives that are not enforceable. They are not able to enforce it. You don't have enough capacity to enforce those directives. Even policemen that were on the road, where I mean, I, 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 I'm a healthcare worker. I drove to a facility at, at some point and I, I drove through the road. And the people were driving. I was wondering, I thought it was locked down in, in this state. How come there are so many vehicles on the road? I think. There were, this enforcement was not strong enough to start with. I think the first week or the second week, yes, it was a little bit okay, but it, from the third week, everything went, went out of control and people were just everywhere. So if you look at the island as is, I mean, for instance, at, at Leki, Aja, there was, there were really no enforcement in that area because I saw a lot of videos where people were, were busy I mean, gallivanting on the street. But it's it just sad because I don't know where we face from here because I'm really afraid and worried and what, what happens afterwards. All right, it's, 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 it's running over a, a month and into two months or even three right now. But what do you make of the level of awareness? Do you think Nigerians are still are, are becoming aware, really aware of uh, what COVID-19 is and how to protect themselves? To a great, I, to a great, uh, to a great, I, um, to, to an extent, yes, the awareness has increased beyond what it was before, uh, I must say. But the, the issue we, I think most Nigerians are having right now is, okay, I, I think I have the coronavirus. I want to do the testing. Where do I go to? If I, go to, if I do the testing, how, how long do I need to wait to get my results? Because I saw a lot of people that are calling me within this lockdown period. Some, some guys sent their staff for, for coronavirus testing, about seven of their staff. And two weeks after, they were still waiting for the results. So if these cases are really infected cases, within that two weeks they're waiting for results, what happens? What about the people they interrelate with if they, re if they really come out positive? So these are the things, there are a lot of gaps that I think um, are still within the process, which of course, it makes the whole thing look questionable and, uh, and not tidy enough. Mm. Now the, the NCDC had uh, come out to say that uh, they were running short of beds, available beds at the isolation centers. Now, how challenging would this be going forward? Because the numbers that we are seeing right now have surpassed the capacity of the isolation centers available, except new ones are made or are made available. What, where do you think uh, the NCDC or we as a people should go from here? 
I think that cry from S uh, uh, NCDC is too early hmm. because we are two, we're about 200 billion population and NCDC has barely tested even 12,000 people and they are crying they don't have beds. This again shows our level of unpreparedness. I mean, we had a lot, we had a lot, a lot of donations that were coming in. What do you do with, what do you do with that money? I mean, we should be able to build formidable facilities right now to take care of as many people as possible. And this is the problem. Now we, we have tested barely 12,000 people. We are crying, we have no enough beds. Yet we release people into the street now, and you know, this is going to multiply the figure. So where do you have to house, house these people should we have multi, multiplied number of infections within the country? And this is the problem. Knowing that are, we don't have enough of those facilities to house these people, it's enough, it's enough reason why the lockdown should have been extended. For me, I've told my household, nobody should go out Let's stay indoor because it is not safe for me. Hmm. It's not safe for anyone. Well, the, those those who find it difficult uh, to uh, get food to survive uh, if they don't do anything certainly would not agree with you when it comes to uh, extending the lockdown. But let me leave you here now. Thank you very much, Ahide, for your time on the My program. Very pleasure. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Joining me now via Skype is the CEO of Occupational Health and Safety Managers, Ehide. Ehide, it's good to have you join me this morning. Now, the government is advising people to do what they can to protect uh, against uh, uh, coronavirus. Now, on one hand, to give the advice, people should uh, maintain social distancing and uh, wear your face mask and, uh, you know, don't be here, don't be there when you're not supposed to be there. Uh, it is on one hand, but the issue of compliance, th does the government need to be coercive or to be forceful or to monitor strictly what is going on to ensure that people comply with some of these restrictions this time? Uh, thank you, Mike. I think human beings, for what they are, we always fight, fight, fight against compliance. We want to be deviant. But the truth is, it's not a matter of government trying to coerce people. That's not what we should be looking at this time. We must understand that coronavirus is real and it's tearing nations, economies, and families apart. Taking coronavirus issue, the prevention personal, is your responsibility. You do not need to wait for government. You do not need to wait to see your neighbor die before you understand how fearful this coronavirus is. Those nose masks that the government is talking about, those washing of hands, the, the flesh elbow sneezing, and the, the, the uh, hygiene improvement, they are your personal responsibilities. You will just limit this spread because the, when you get involved in all these things that government says you should do, you reduce the chain of spread because a man, you, a man that needed not to be infected has no reason to have infection because he just, he just became behavior. So, so you just need to do these things. Government must come and, and hold a stick for us to do what we know is right for us to stay alive. It's our personal responsibility, and we must take it personal. It's, uh, th that's generally on the ideal, because when it comes to advising and instructing people, it is quite easy to do, but the actual compliance to say, okay, we said this and it has to be done is another thing altogether. What does government need to do at this point or what do the people need to do? Because the advice has been out there from WHO, from Ministry of Health, from NCDC, from the state governments, and, and all of that. All the advice has been out there all the while. But we're not seeing the necessary compliance. So what options are open now? I didn't get that correctly, but... All right. It, it seems we have lost the, the signal from... Okay, I understand uh, we have Ehi back now. Yeah. Okay, Ehi, go, go ahead. I was, I was asking what options are left for, are open to government now, uh, now that uh, all the advice are not being heeded to. Well, government has to take, take a, uh, I mean, employ positive measure because go, if when, thing, when things go out of hand entirely, government has to suffer because now you have to look at how to bury those that died because of coronavirus that could have died how to start moving, moving mortal remains out of, out of homes and over, over burdening the already fragile healthcare system. And, and it, is, it is tough. I think what government should be doing right now, in my estimation, is to be holding town hall meetings. Let's, let's get 
clusters of people within the communities. Let's get them to talk to through their through their traditional rulers, dipping the talk into the communities, not by television. Let's hold hot. I mean, let's talk to our people through um, those they understand, those they listen to. That this is critical and give enforcement from those. If you look at even the communities right now, it's deepening into the community. So we need government to engage these traditional rulers and opinion leaders to please help talk to their people. They have a way to do it in the community. Use tank criers, all, all that you have to do. Just keep reinforcing the message. The more you talk about it, the more it sinks in and the more people are there. Now, the, the spread of uh, coronavirus is increasing. The numbers are increasing by the day uh, as we are seeing, as the NCDC is reeling. In fact, they now come in hundreds and more states are getting their numbers uh, up from where they used to be. Now, are you seeing a likely likelihood of going forward with these numbers increasing? Are you seeing a likelihood of uh, shutting down the country again or another, like, another lockdown? That is, that, is, that is looming already. Because when you look at the figures, uh, they are spiking. In no short time, this decision we have made today to, to unlock the cities and let all right, they we have to go and do what they like. We are going to come back again when the figures become overwhelmingly high. When the figures become overwhelmingly high, we are going to come back again. Mm. What, we, what we ought to have done now, we'll start doing it again. Since I will show that, because if you look at the figures, look at Kano, for instance, and look at, look at what is, the spike is entering, that is bringing to Kaduna. We just need to shut down the whole country, let everybody suffer it at once, and get out of it on the other side, better people. We just All have right. to just do that. It's okay. difficult, but we must do it. All right. Uh, safety first, and everyone has to stay alive. Thank you very much, Ahid, for your time on the program.